to Cowboys Rewind, I'm Britt Johnson. The Dallas Cowboys are looking to close out on top this season as they head into the home stretch of the regular season with just two games left. The players are back virtual for the time being, but that didn't stop Zach Martin from joining Cowboys Hour to talk Pro Bowl and possible future Hall of Fame. I, I tease you, uh, uh, but I'm not teasing about the honors. Um, you were asked a lot about making the Pro Bowl again. I know it's not what you're thinking about. I know, and that's another thing that I do want to get into. But um, but you did have uh, the injuries that kept you out of it last year. And so um, congratulations on making it again. And what, what does that mean to you? Where does it fit in your in your galaxy? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge honor. And I think every year, obviously, we've got team goals, but – you know, every year you come in with your individual goals. And, um, you know, I think I have a standard for myself on how I want to play and how I, I think I'm capable of playing. And, um, you know, obviously I had some ups and downs last year, uh, missed some significant time for the first time in my career. And I, I really want to make a point to come back and, and just be that same guy, be the guy that everyone can count on to be consistent um, week in and week out and, um, you know, get back to playing at that high level. So, um, you know, big honor for me again, um, but, um, you know, I worked, I worked hard to get back to this and, and, uh, I just keep trying to take my game to that next level. When you missed the first week, um, and, and some of your teammates were asked about, okay, what, what is, what will you be missing in Zach and Zeke Elliott, uh, didn't even hesitate, uh, by saying something that frankly, I agree with, which is, uh, Zeke said, well, Zach's our best football player. So we're really going to have to work to uh, to get around uh, missing him. Um, how important to you is that kind of affirmation from your teammates? I mean, yeah, I think any, especially coming from Zeke, who I you know I think so highly of um, as a person and a player and a competitor, um, it means a lot. And it was tough. I think especially coming off coming off of missing those last five or six games last year. Um, not, be able, not being able to be out there on that opening night, especially um, down in Tampa versus the defending champs and, um, you know, be with my teammates. But, you know, I think as we've seen throughout this whole year, every team is going through um, all the different COVID stuff. So um, it's just part of part of what we're, we're dealing with right now is, um, you know, really across the world. And, um, you know, I was back in the next week and, and, and uh, obviously it felt great when I was able to get back out there with my team. Now, I'm, I, I'm not kidding about the Hall of Fame. I know that we had a little running joke for a couple of years, the beginning of your career, when I would ask you about playing tackle. And then last year you went out and played tackle as soon as I quit asking <laughs> you about it. Uh, but that I was kind of kidding about that. Just not my fault. You're a versatile athlete and you can do more than one thing. Don't don't shoot the messenger. Uh, but I'm not kidding about the Hall of Fame. Uh, you're 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 all decade. Uh, you're a seven time Pro Bowler. If you're healthy, you're going to continue to make them. Uh, and and I really, I really believe that you're a Hall of Fame player. What does that mean to you? Where is that in your galaxy? Uh, I mean, look, I'd be lying to you if I said I've never thought about it before. Um, obviously, I think. Uh, as you start your career, those, I mean, at least for me, that was never like, I didn't come in the NFL and say, you know, I want to be this or that, uh, you know, obviously I had expectations for myself, but I didn't come in saying, I, I, I think I'm going to be a hall of famer. And, you know, obviously I think I still have some ways to go there, but, um, you know, over the years, it's it definitely something that kind of pops up in your mind and it is a goal you set out for yourself. <laughs> and, you know, I think at this point in my career, obviously winning, the, winning the whole thing is number one, but, um, you know, continuing to take my game up each year and, and stay that consistent level to maybe have a shot there one day, it, it's definitely a goal. What are some of the keys to success as the Cowboys prepare for the remainder of the season? Stay tuned on Cowboys Rewind. Cowboys Rewind is brought to you by AT&T and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. 
some of the biggest keys to success for the Cowboys in the postseason is what seed the Dallas Cowboys secure and, well, how healthy the team is heading into the playoffs. A big factor of health for the Cowboys is Pro Bowl offensive tackle Tyron Smith, who has suffered throughout the season with injuries. Anyway. Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith's <laughs> looking, I, he's looking like he's going to play. I'm sorry, yeah. everybody. Yeah. He's looking like he's going to play against Arizona. That's the early word on the street. We'll have to see. But Are you okay with that? Because I know a couple weeks ago you were saying, like, man, just let him well, sit that's, and chill. No, I'm not really okay with it, I guess, because in my mind I'm thinking, all right, let me look at the calendar. He plays this game. He gets through it, but he gets a setback, and then he misses the Eagles game, and then two weeks later. So, so I'm already thinking. Yeah. You know, When's the next one? I, I probably wouldn't play him. I I probably wouldn't. But you know, if he's good to go, he's good to go. I mean, you, you got to have this game. I mean, yeah. You got to you got to win. That's the thing for me. And unfortunately, I haven't had. I'm gonna run the rest of these numbers today because I am curious what like all of the contenders' home away splits are. But like this, this is sneaky important. It's not even sneaky. Why would I say it's sneaky? Like they need these wins. They need to maximize their seating. I looked this up this morning. They are winning their home games by an average score of 38 mm -hmm. to 22, and their road the the road split is 23 to 20. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> so what am I looking at here? Uh, that's like everybody's schedule the rest of the way. Oh no, yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about that. I just I don't oh, I don't know how much better everybody else is home, versus, home versus away. Way, I'm yeah. sure everybody's. Well, we at it, home. I think the Cardinals. The I Cardinals are not. No, they are great on the road. Right, they're way better on the they road. They got problems right now. Yeah. But it yeah. just what they did to Washington only f emphasizes to me how important it is that this play team plays as many games as possible at home. Uh, yeah. And and. Yeah, I'm what? Denver's really the only game where they haven't played pretty damn well at home. Like, I know they lost to the Raiders. They scored 33 points in that game, mm -hmm. took it to overtime. So my point is, if if Tyron can play, I'm trying to at least get the number two seed. Number one seed's not really in your control. But if you can get the two seed, you're guaranteed two home playoff games. And that play. that is all in your control. You yes. win the final two, you so, stay at – well. You hope that you stay at two. You need the Rams to keep yeah, winning it's right weird. along with you. But it's weird. You got the best you can do is you got to keep winning, right? Yeah. Which and then, <laughs> well, the Bucks can lose. I mean, it's not like they're they can. Yeah, but I they mean, don't have they don't have the kind of schedule that makes you think they're I, going to and, lose. And but they can. Nick's, you're absolutely right. They Nick's can. gonna come at us because the the Lions just beat the Cardinals. No, I'm I just saying. That. I mean, they can though. They, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, but if the Saints can. If that Saints team that we just saw. Last night against Miami can shut out the Bucks at home. Then yeah, they they can be beat. They can. No, and, be. No, wait, Who do they play? Wait, I don't even. Uh, know. I guess uh, here's the deal: the Jets. They play the Jets and this the week. Cardinals team that just that they just beat by 25. Yeah. 24. So the Bucks don't Bucks don't get to do the whole division stuff at the end. No. Well, they, I mean, they their played, last game is division. They right? played three of their last four against the division. Panthers they, are. Panthers I guess are he, I guess you can't do everybody yeah. that way. Yeah. I, I think this is a team that I look at Tampa and I'm like, they're probably going to keep winning. So your best shot is you got to keep winning and you got to pray the Rams keep winning. Are there worries on the defensive side of the ball? More when we return. This segment was brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. The offense has been a bit banged up the last few weeks and are finally looking healthier and the same can technically be said for the defense. The Cowboys defense has been missing some key starters the majority of the season, but because they have so much depth, they haven't missed a beat. Now that those starters have returned, the boys are looking to have some fresh legs each and every game. Yeah, and you know, and you know, third down is the money down right now this this defense some ranks somewhere around 25, 26. Uh, however, and, and maybe after the last game, they're going to be a lot higher. But third down is very important. No matter how you look at turnover differential, the turnovers, and also third down, getting off the field. And that's what they've been so good at is getting off the field. And that's when we talk about this momentum. 
and, and how you just accentuated that point about where our offense was on third down and how the tide had changed there with them, you know, obviously getting to first down, the defense and how the tide has changed and them getting off the field on third down. Look, we're peaking at the right time. All the right things are happening uh, for us. But you, I just want to go back to something that Isaiah said about what Dan Quinn is doing, and that is isolating these matchups putting guards on an island and it ain't P Island, but you get on that <laughs> hey, you get on that Island and you have Michael Parsons in front of you or Randy Gregory in front of you. However, he switches it up or tank in front of you. And you're finding that they're just isolating and manhandling one side of the offensive line. It's so hard for guys to slide, protect to one side to take one guy away on our front seven. It's just awesome to see this. And obviously, as guys get healthy, we played that game without Tristan Hill. Uh, that, that, that's yeah. another guy that you're adding to that rotation. I don't look, man, the momentum that they have on defense right now is just, man, it's 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 uncanny uh, the way that this defense has changed from last year to this year. And one of the things that they highlighted on during the broadcast is the distribution of snaps. And that's one of the things that's undervalued yeah. right now. Guys are going from playing 50 something, 60 something snaps as a typical defense alignment, typical front seven. And now these guys are 20, 25 snaps. You know, but what does that, that mean, that, Isaiah? It, what does that mean? Oh, God, I mean, Dog on fresh legs, man. That's fresh right. legs. I mean, you, you think about the duration of a game. If you go out there and run 25 yard sprints, I could do 25 yard sprints. And that's that's really what these defense alignment are doing. They're playing in a five to seven yard box. I can come off the ball 100% 20 to 25 times and literally be 100%. Now you start taking me to 50 and 60 while I'm pushing up another, uh, pushing up against another grown man and you're mixing in run defense. I'm going to be a little gas, and I'm not going to. It's not going to be at my best every single time. I'm going to give my best, but I'm not going to be at my best. When I'm going 20, 25 snaps a game, I'm not only going to give my best, but I'm also going to be at my best. So you're getting 100% of whoever I am every time you line up against me. And guess what? When I go out, my boy's coming in. And guess what? He's 100% too. That depth yeah, is a problem. It's a huge Good. problem. And they had, I think, a 10-man rotation up front in this last game. I feel like they've done that since they've gotten some of their key guys back. So not only you, and that's without Tristan Hill playing in the game last Sunday. So that's a 10 man rotation and three of the guys with Hill coming back eventually are fresh legs, guys that have been out on top of it. I mean, Demarcus Lawrence, Devil Gallimore and Tristan Hill should be really fresh down the stretch on top of the fact that they're, they've got some depth. What has been some of the biggest changes from last season to this season to put the Cowboys in the position they're in right now? Will Dave Hellman and Kelsey Charles break it down when we return? The Cowboys ended their season last year with a losing record of 6-10. Not only is there an extra game added this season, but the Cowboys have been on a roll dominating December with a four game win streak that has led the boys to a current record of 11 and four heading into week 17. The big question here is what has changed? Let's check out the breakdown on this week's Star at Night. I came up with a list of some of the top reasons why this Cowboys team has been having the success they have. And I want to break it down with you. It's a bit good. of a Mount Rushmore, if you will. A Mount Rushmore of why they're so much better this year? Yes. Okay. Honestly. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, number four, let's start with the obvious. They uh, signed Dak Prescott. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny because, like, I don't think about this the same way that I think about some of these other things. Like, Dak was going to be here. I never had any doubt about that. I really appreciate the Cowboys for getting it out of the way, but we knew that. But, man, it's, it's been a joy to see him bounce back from that injury and, and hit the ground running the way he has. All right, well, he's not the only player that this team signed. They had a pretty strong offseason in terms of free agent signings, and I want to get your thoughts on some of the most impactful. Now, this is wild. because Again, I knew they were going to sign Dak. What I didn't know is that everybody that they brought in in free agency for pennies was going to be great. J. Ron Curse signed for nothing. De Keanu Neal and DeMonte Casey, they were bargain, bargain finds. Dollar store deals. Carlos Watkins, like all these guys that nobody was expecting much of. Killing it. Way to go. I love it. All right, so another person that's killing it too is uh, Micah Parsons. I have to imagine there we go. drafting him was a pretty big deal for this team. Talk to me. Even the people that wanted Micah Parsons to be the pick never saw this coming. Like, just imagine 
Go back to draft night and think about the, let's not sugarcoat it, disappointment among most Cowboys fans that they didn't get J.C. Horn or Patrick Sertan. Oh, guess what? They got a guy who's in the running for defensive player of the year right now. It, I mean, Don't hate it. if I had to pick one thing that has single-handedly changed this team the most from last year to this, other than Dak being healthy, it's that guy, which is amazing. All right, so the guy who's in charge of telling that guy what to do, Dan Quinn, I have to imagine, yeah, uh, his presence on this team has been pretty impactful as well. Swag Daddy Dan? Sure. <laughs> yes, uh, case in point, Dan Quinn was the voice that brought a lot of those guys here. Like the free agent signings that you make, the decisions that you make, scouting defensive players in the draft. It's not just Micah, Kelvin Joseph, Oso Digizua, Chauncey Golston. All those guys are making an impact. And then there's the scheme of it all, by the way. Dan Quinn, one of the best hires the Cowboys have made in recent memory. It's time to have a little fun. Maybe I'll do a little dance. Okay, maybe I won't, but we got more coming on Cowboys Rewind when we return. We have continued to see Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs dominate on the field, but this week we got to check them out in some off-the-field games that prove these guys are definitely just as competitive off the gridiron as they are on. Here we are, 7-Eleven, day two challenge. You see who got the belt. I'm going to keep the belt. I'm going to keep keeping the belt, and he ain't going to be able to touch the belt till I'm done with it. So you want to touch it? No. <laughs> That's why I'm saying I need a fresh roll because mine are a little light. That's crazy. That's actually so crazy. <laughs> so here's the rules. It's called the toilet paper challenge, right? So you take the toilet paper roll and you roll it as fast as you can with you're competing against the other guy for time. So whoever gets, whoever is able to pick the helmet up the fastest across the finish line wins. Okay. All right, bet. All right, bet. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, they broke. <laughs> His broke. His broke. He lost. No, it, no, yes, it did. Much. It broke. It's, it's about much. to break. <laughs> what are you doing? It broke. <laughs> he lost. See? That's Young Whipper so Snapper, dumb. you know you can't do this. <laughs> That's so dumb. Yeah, two out of three. <laughs> two out of three. <laughs> I'm definitely going to switch a strategy. Like, what the heck? It's all right. You were moving too fast. You wanted to win so bad. You forgot details. I was just telling you the details. Details. Low key, I think my helmet bigger. Like that's a, that's a bigger helmet. All right, switch helmets. Let me get the bad helmet then. All right, we good? Three, two, one, go. Yo, my helmet's not even moving. <laughs> you lost. I'm already at the Tostitos. <laughs> I'm already at the Tostitos. You gonna break again. That's the dumbest game I've ever <laughs> To hear these dumb games. I never heard of that game. Oh, man. You wanna play chess? Yeah. Look. <laughs> I this won again. Sick. Like I said, he mad. Y'all got any other games? <laughs> That's realistic. <laughs> He's just mad. I'm still the champ. That's not based off of toilet paper? I'm still the champ. How'd John Cena be? He got Jenga in his house. See y'all for day three. <laughs> See, I told you guys we were going to have some fun today. If you guys want to see all of those games that Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs played, make sure you check out DallasCowboys.com. But we got one more thing before we get out of here. So I told you guys I might dance. We're going to go to caption that. Now, make sure if you want to join the Dallas Cowboys fan club, do so. And then you can possibly be on the show. We post on Dallas Cowboys Facebook. This picture each week, well, it's a different picture, but you get the idea. We post a picture like this each week, and we tell them to leave your best caption in the comments. This is our winner. 
Chris said, would you look at that? They are still fighting for those benches they brought. Um, yeah, those benches were not good for the Washington team because I got them a little heated so much so that they got in a fight with each other on the sidelines. But we don't have to worry about them again for the rest of this season. Go Dallas Cowboys. I'm Britt Johnson. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Cowboys Rewind, and I'll see you guys next time. Cowboys Rewind was brought to you by AT&T, SWBC Mortgage. Join the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Visit swbcmortgage.com to find a pro today. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.